There is a basic truth on all we do, and in this case is that meat plus fire equals dinner. This has been the most primal recipe ever made, and today we will discover if it does still work. Caveman steaks, also known as fire steak or Eisenhower steak, apparently the President Eisenhower used to love this thing, is a thick cut of meat that you can cook on the coals right on top of the long charcoal fire. And this is, guys, literally the most basic way of cooking ever invented by mankind. Normally when we talk about searing a steak, we are referring to heating a cast iron pan and cooking our steaks with oils, butter and spices. Or we can be talking about a grill searing, where we set the steaks at a distance from a direct heat source to get those beautiful grill marks and colors we all love. But if you think about it, the first time that somebody asked anybody else to sear on a steak, they were not talking about what we call searing today in the modern times. I have no idea how it was called, or the language that the first chefs used to refer to searing, but I know what they meant. Set the meat right on top of the bonfire and let it cook on until it looked amazing. However, after that, people started getting sophisticated and learning from experience to the point of what we today call searing meat. I mean, all that trial and error should mean something. I'm not going to lie to you. I've seen so many videos about the caveman style steak cooking over the internet that it's kind of crazy. But I never seen a good comparison to find out if those cooks from time in memoria can even compare to what we do today. This is gonna be the steak that is gonna go right on top of the charcoal. And as you can see, we're using a tomahawk steak here. The reason for using a tomahawk steak is because we already have a big bone extension that we can use to flip and manipulate the steaks. And even though it is big, I'm confident we can handle it very well. Of course, people from the past didn't use a lot of spices, but we are not savages here. We will be adding salt and pepper on our steaks, but nothing else. If you are familiar with this channel, you will already know that if you want to feel the flavors and the taste of the meat, that's all you need. And of course, for good measurement, we're going to put a thermometer into the steak so we can follow the temperature degree by degree. But first, if you're going to cook it this way, you need to know how to put the charcoal in your grill. We will set the charcoal in one section of the grill only and create two different zones of heat. Let's call them the hot zone and the cool zone, just for reference. Once your charcoal is in the grill, let's add the grates and let it heat up for about 15 minutes. Now we will place the steak in the cool zone of the grill and we will monitor it until the internal temperature of the meat hit 120 degrees. Once our steak is up to temperature, I will remove the grates of the grill and set the steak right on top of the lid charcoal. As you can imagine, sitting here will be really fast, about 2-3 minutes per side, and you don't have to worry too much about changing the steak's position. After let it sear for about 2 minutes on each side, I will remove it from the fire and let it rest for about 10 minutes. This resting time, in this case, is more essential than in any other case. As the fire was directly in contact with the meat, those boiling juices will be really close to the surface of the steak and we really want them back into the meat. Miss Ninja, I have a surprise here for you. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you because I haven't, I haven't finished it. I have another big boy there to cook. Look at that. Okay, but what that is it that massive. you're not gonna tell me? Are you gonna keep it as a secret? I'm gonna keep it as a secret because I don't want you to be biased. I want you to give it a try. Hold that thought. We're gonna cook that one and then give it another try and we go from there. Okay. Let's cut this baby. <laughs> oh man, this looks so good. No, they look amazing. And let me tell you, these things is huge it looks so good and what impressed me the most was the price unbelievable no that thing is long <laughs> all right let's give it a good try let's go mm -hmm. we have it here let's go for it mm. wow mm -hmm. wow i love it wow love it mm. Ooh. got a little bit of that Beautiful pepper in there, mm -hmm. flavor pepper. Oh my goodness, guys, I can't hold it anymore. This thing is delicious, bro. And sisters, this thing is amazing. <laughs> this thing is real good. Tell me, what do you feel? I feel that the flavor is 
super intense. Okay. That's for sure. All right. What else? What else? I feel like, well, like any good steak, this is super juicy. I love the texture of the meat. I really like it. Do you feel any difference with the steaks we normally grill here? With the charcoal? Uh, any difference at all? I feel it's less intense when it comes to the charcoal. Yes. Really? Yes. All right, that's Miss Ninja opinion, guys. I cannot agree with that. I really think that the charcoal flavor is amazing. No, it, it's yeah. really tender. It's really good. It cooked to perfection, medium rare perfection, and it's great. Now, guys, let's go into the other one because we have that big boy waiting for us over there. Those things and we are have to cook it. Huge. Let's go. <laughs> Now we would be cooking this steak as we always do in the cast iron pan. If you need more information about it, we made a whole video about how to cook with a cast iron pan and I'll leave the link in the right top corner. And just to keep it consistent, we're gonna be cooking this beautiful, thick and long tomahawk steak we have here with us. But as you can imagine, the practicality of having such a big bone in the steak is gonna make things a little bit difficult when you put them in the skillet. Here again, as you can see, this steak is about two inches thick and it weighs about two pounds, including the weight of the bone. So yeah, this tomahawk is gonna be a big thick for the pan. It normally takes about three minutes per side to cook a regular steak in a cast iron skillet. But because of the sheer size of this free bite, I will let it cook for about five minutes per side. And yes, we will be treating this baby as we did with the other steak. Seasoning here again is gonna be really light as we're only gonna use salt and pepper. And as we did with the other steak, we will let it rest for about 20 minutes before starting to cook it. Trust me, allowing the meat to rest at room temperature with the seasoning on it will give you a better steak at the end. The concentration of salt is more dilute than the protein rich liquid inside the meat cells. And so the water from the salt bonds with the proteins resulting in juicier meats. Once your pan is on the fire, let it get very, very hot. And at that point, you're gonna add about two to three tablespoons of avocado oil in this case, and you will allow the oil to heat up too. Add your steak into the pan, and here we're gonna give it about five minutes while we handle everything from that big bone sticking out of the steak. Isn't that cool? Once your steak look as beautiful as you want it to be, carefully flip it over. And at this point, we will add two tablespoons of butter, four garlic cloves, and rosemary. You should have all these spices prepared before getting into this because right now there is no time to get ready for it. And right after the butter is melted, you can start basing your steak with the melted butter and oils. Remember to set the garlic and the rosemary right on top of the steak as you want those oils from those spices to penetrate your meat. After five minutes, remove your steak and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Well, Miss Ninja, here we have the second steak today, and as you can see, it's That's looking a amazing. lot of steak. Guys, this is looking great, but there is a lot of meat in here. I think we're gonna have some good lunch tomorrow too. I guess so, or breakfast, make some burritos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Ninja. Ah, let's, let's go, go for it. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Look, it's real buttery. Guys, this is delicious. Man. And sisters. Where's your brother? Oh, no problem. <laughs> I, I'm just tired, it's late. Guys, this one is amazing. Uh, so it's time to ask uh, the question. Which, which one? one? Which one is that better? Mm, the one before because of the charcoal. The one before. Charcoal. Guys. I, I don't know. I, I, I go with the, the other one is a caveman style steak, which is just on top of the charcoal. So you get all that charcoal flavor in there. Yep. This is amazing, guys. Don't get me wrong. This is tasteful, it's juicy, it's amazing, it's delicious. 
but it doesn't have the charcoal flavor. Yeah. And you might be thinking that we are all used to the charcoal flavor and that's why we don't like anything else. It's not like that. No, I, I mean, like this one too, but... This one is awesome. My but, favorite. But that's charcoal, guys. Charcoal. So there you have it. A comparison between the caveman style steak and the regular steak. Both exactly the same steaks. They look amazing. They are great. The only difference here is the flavor. So, let me ask you, if we made you hungry, please hit us with a like. Lots of like. Don't forget to subscribe <laughs> to the channel and share with your friends and family and leave your comments down there. What are you, your caveman team or you are the, uh, the cast iron skillet team? You let me know down there in the comments, guys. That's all for today, but remember that. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. See ya.